Good morning. Good morning. Today, we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, Sunday of Divine Mercy. The risen Christ goes before us into God's glory. With joyful alleluias, we celebrate, giving praise and thanks. My name is John Sidorsky. Chris Foley and I will proclaim the word. Alicia Benelli is our cantor. At this time, would you please silence all cell phones? Our gathering hymn is God of Might and God of Mercy. Let us place ourselves in God's holy presence. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we're celebrating the second Sunday of Easter. We call the eight days, starting from Easter Sunday, lasting through today, the octave of Easter. It is one great massive solemnity, uh, our celebration of the day of Easter. And this Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, is also called Divine Mercy Sunday. Uh, it's because of this image that we have here, an image of Jesus' divine mercy. In the lead-up to World War II, Jesus appeared to a Polish sister, St. Faustina Kowalska, asking her to share this image and this message of Jesus' mercy with the whole world. And so we gather this morning, recalling that, asking for God's mercy, and singing to him our hymn of praise. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people 
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Stone which the builders rejected has been. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not harsh, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies and the spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the Lord the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. When we come to Mass on a Sunday, we come very often with our own expectations. We come with our own experiences from the week. And our own experiences or our expectations could be pretty different one person from another. And it's for that reason that when we come to worship, the priest prays at the beginning of Mass an opening prayer. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And then I say something else. And then I say, let us pray. The prayer that comes after that is called the Collect. It's different every Sunday of the year. And it's called the Collect because it is meant to collect our experiences, our expectations that we have, and to bring them into focus and to give us a sight with which to read the scriptures. I love the Collect for this second Sunday of Easter. It asks for three things. It asks that we may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. In what font we've been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. And so I just want to break each of those open very briefly this morning uh, to give us a little bit of insight about what is happening in this second Sunday of Easter. So first, this is a real question. In what font have we been washed? We've been washed in that font, the baptismal font. You may not have been baptized in precisely this font, Although some of you have been baptized very recently in precisely this font. Last week, we had four new Christians baptized at the Easter Vigil, and one of them, both before, but especially after the Easter Vigil, was doing the following. <laughs> that is somebody who has grasped and rightly understood in what font we have been washed. It is that good. 
by whose Spirit have we been reborn? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. The Trinity is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and one God. And the Holy Spirit is the love that passes between the Father and the Son, and that is poured out on us. That is the mystery that we spend our whole life unpacking. In what font we've been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, and by whose blood we have been redeemed. So I have a story I would really like to share with you. This happened to me on Friday. You know, people have had a long year. People are, might be itching to travel. I was looking for something kind of relaxing, maybe a little bit luxurious and fun to do on Friday. So you know where I went? The Bronx. I went and I celebrated Mass for the Sisters of Life, some sisters I'm friends with, and I went to go visit a seminarian I'm friends with, my friend, Brother Joseph Michael. He's a Franciscan friar. You can pray for him. He's going to be ordained as a priest in six weeks. And afterwards, he was going into Manhattan, and he asked me if I could drop him off at the subway. So I dropped him off at the top of the one line in the Bronx, and uh, I decided I would park my car and go for a little walk around the block and then drive back up. And as I, was, as I was finishing my walk and was getting close to my car, I was in my collar, and a man walked past me and he said, Father, will you pray for my father? So we stopped and we started talking. And this is what he told me, that about 20 years ago, he had gotten in a fight with his dad and had done something really insulting to his father. And he felt really bad about it, but had assumed that his dad forgot about it. And this week, his dad told him, I still remember that, and uh, I have to tell you, I haven't been able to forget about that or forgive you for it. And this guy said to me, Father, will you please pray that my dad is able to forgive me for this? I had no idea that he was walking around with this resentment, that he was carrying this for all this time. I thought he forgot about it. So will you pray for that? And I said, yeah, this is actually the perfect time for you to be asking for this, because this is Divine Mercy Sunday. This Sunday will be. This is the time when we pray in a particular way to be able to receive God's mercy and to be able to receive and forgive the kind of unconditional forgiveness that God gives to us over and over and over again. And so this person I was talking to you to said to me, you mean that my dad told me this this week and that I was going to meet you here and you were going to tell me that this Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday? That's serious stuff. <laughs> and then this thought came into my head. It was kind of a peaceful thought, and it just rested there during our conversation. Sometimes when that happens, it can be a prompting from the Holy Spirit. So, thinking that it might be, I said to this man, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on you, uh, but I feel moved to offer, would you like me to hear your confession right now? And he said, yeah, Father, I've been thinking for a long time that I would like to go. And so there, underneath the outdoor tracks of the one train in the Bronx, that's what happened. I don't know what the people around us were thinking was going on, <laughs> but who cares what they were thinking? That is the most important thing in the world that could happen, and it was happening there on the sidewalk, because God's mercy endures forever. That gospel Deacon Brian read tells us that Jesus appeared in this room where the disciples were, although the doors were locked. We know, don't we? We all have locked doors. And Jesus is not controlled by our locked doors. He can come in even if we lock them from the inside. But he loves when we are willing to open them, 
to him. And if we're not willing to open them, when we're, if we're not able to open them, when we're willing to say to him, Lord, I don't even know how to open this door. Please help me to open this door. And he comes in and he says what he says to those apostles. Peace be with you. So that's my encouragement for you for this week, starting this Divine Mercy Sunday, that we are being asked, so let's do this, to open doors in our hearts. Dear brothers and sisters, as we commemorate this octave day of Easter, in this season, we renew the promises that we made at our baptism, no matter how many years it was ago, or if it was last Saturday. And so, if you believe these things, I invite you in response to each of these questions to say, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
we may not have seen face to face the risen Christ, but still believe. And so, with confident faith, we bring our prayers before the Lord. That our Easter celebration may make our church and parish a community united in faith, prayer, and the breaking of bread, we pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. That Pope Francis and all who lead the church may be ministers of forgiveness and prophets of peace, we pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. That the neophytes, especially Zachariah Biggers and Melissa, Naomi, and Sephora Niangoran, may always find joy in their new life in Jesus, the Messiah, we pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. That the homeless and dispossessed may find among today's Christians the same generosity that marked the community at its beginnings, we pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. That the sick, the recovering, and the struggling may know healing through our compassion and care, we pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. That the faithful who have died may be reborn in the life of the risen Christ, especially Raymond Coonrad, Eugene Morris, Mark Miller, Richard Morris, Anthony Jamas, Nicholas McVeigh, and for Don Lambert, Robert Romano, and Helene Dous, who died recently. We pray. Risen Savior, fill us with peace. Generous Father, source of all life and plant in our hearts the gift of faith, and let it grow deeper. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy Lord. church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm -hmm. 
the history of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Edward our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
worship the Lord, all you people. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of brief announcements. First of all, uh, we welcome the photographer from The Evangelist. Uh, we had a reporter from The Evangelist here yesterday at the uh, afternoon mass who will be doing a story upcoming soon about the Nian Gorin family and uh, our wonderful newly baptized neophytes. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, we have this beautiful image of divine mercy here out this weekend. Normally it's in our Blessed Sacrament Chapel but you're welcome after Mass to come up and look at it, kneel and pray in front of it, whatever you'd like. It is here for you. And last of all, it's Divine Mercy Sunday. I know it's not as beautiful here as it is in the Bronx, um, <laughs> but nevertheless, I'll be available for the Sacrament of Reconciliation after Mass. So you're welcome to come. I'll stay as long as there are people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.